Hello class, Mr. Linder here. In this video, I want to show you how to record your data and analyze your data for the resting pulse rate uh, experiment in Laboratory 1. So Laboratory 1 is a homeostasis uh, laboratory. And in this homeostasis laboratory, uh, you're supposed to learn about the negative feedback system. And the best way to help you guys understand negative feedback is to go ahead and record some data for yourself uh, to see how negative feedback is working. It also is going to help you understand the idea of dynamic constancy uh, and the idea of a set point. If you recall from the reading, dynamic constancy is a fluctuation uh, above and below a set point. And a set point represents the average value uh, for a particular uh, variable in your body. For example, uh, blood pressure is 120 over 80 and body temperature is 37 degrees C. Uh, those are set point values, uh, but your blood pressure and your heart rate uh, and your uh, body temperature are never exactly uh, those numbers. They're going to fluctuate above and below those values. So your body temperature may be 37 degrees C uh, at one point in time, but it'll also be less than that and more than that uh, throughout the day. Same thing for heart rate. Average heart rate might be 70 beats per minute, but your heart rate can be above or below that. So that represents the dynamic constancy or fluctuations around the set point, and the set point represents the average for that value. So in this experiment, you're going to be measuring uh, your heart rate. And what you're going to do uh, is you're going to find your radial uh, artery pulse, uh, and then you're going to measure the heart rate in 10 second increments. But you want to do this continuous. So you want to measure for 10 seconds and then rest for 10 seconds and then measure again for 10 seconds and then rest for 10 seconds uh, and so forth and so forth until you have, as you see on the data uh, table here, until you have 15 total measurements. So what you do is you set your timer uh, and you're going to start your timer and for the first 10 seconds, 0 to 10, you're going to count how many pulsations you feel in your radial artery. So for example, if I find my radial artery uh, pulse, I can go ahead and start the timer and then count how many pulsations uh, I have. One, two, three, four, etc. in that 10 second time frame. And then what I do is I go ahead and write that down on a piece of paper or I can uh, uh, write it onto my lab report, but you're going to have to do it fairly quickly because you only have 10 seconds in between uh, each measurement. So let's say that first one was 10. So 10 beats in a 10 second uh, interval. Then I'm waiting 10 seconds and not counting. So from 10 to 20, I'm not counting anything. But as soon as I get to 20 on the timer, I'm counting again. One, two, three, four, etc. Let's say that second measurement is 11. Then I wait 10 seconds. Then I make the third measurement. Let's say that one's 11. Then I make the fourth measurement. That one's 12. And then I take the fifth measurement. That one's 10 and so forth and so forth. And so you're going to continue through 6 through 10 and 11 through 15 you've made 15 total measurements. And so that's going to take you five minutes. It's a continuous five minute experiment where you count 10 seconds on and then you take a 10 second break and then you take another measurement and then 10 seconds off again and so forth and so forth. Once you have all 15 okay, measurements completed, then you need to go back and figure out, well, how many beats per minute would that actually be? Well, if I measure 10 beats in a 10 second time frame, there are six 10 second time frames uh, in a minute. So this beats per minute would be 10 times six, which would be 60. The second one would be 11 times six. That would be 66. The third one would also be 66. The fourth one, 12 times six, would be 70. Two. And the fifth one would be 60 again. What you're seeing in the data is already a fluctuation in the values. 
even though you're taking resting heart rate, you're seeing an increase and a decrease or a dynamic constancy uh, in the data. And you'll see that as you continue on through all 15 measurements and all of your uh, beats per minute data. Once you have your data recorded, then you can start analyzing your data. So the second part says to graph your results. So make sure that you put, and you're graphing the beats per minute, okay? Not the beats in 10 seconds. Now we're gonna use beats per minute data uh, from now on. So you're gonna graph your beats per minute. That'll go on your Y axis. Uh, your Y axis is the vertical uh, axis. And then number of measurements, or essentially time, is your X axis. And that'll be your horizontal axis on your graph. So you take some graph paper and you make a Y axis and an X axis, and then you go ahead and plot those points. So at measurement one, I would plot uh, the 60 beats per minute. And then at measurement two, I would plot the 66 and so forth and so forth. In the third part, you're gonna start doing some statistical analysis on your data. So for part three, it says to find the average for your pulse rates. And again, you're using the beats per minute data. So you're gonna add up 60 plus 66 plus 66 plus 72, et cetera, et cetera. You're gonna add up all your beats per minute data, and then you're gonna divide it by 15, and that'll give you an average. So let's say, for example, uh, your average comes out to be 65 beats per minute. After you analyze all of your numbers uh, and divide by 15, so you add them all up, divide by 15, I get an average of 65 beats per minute. And yet my heart rate was sometimes 60 and sometimes my heart rate was 72. Again, this is the set point value and then it shows the dynamic constancy around that set point. The range is your high to low. So let's say, for example, maybe one of my measurements was 58. Uh, let's say it went that low, and then let's say I went up to, say, 80. That would be my highest number, so that would be my uh, range. So whatever your lowest number and your highest number is, that represents the range, again, in beats per minute, uh, that you would put down for part B. Part C is your standard deviation. In order to do standard deviation, you have to know your average, and you have to know each individual beats per minute uh, data point. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this table okay, on the next page. This is the standard deviation, and this is going to show us our essentially plus or minus value above and below our average. In row number one, you're going to take the difference between your average and your uh, individual data point. So for example, my first beats per minute was 60. So my average was 65. So the difference between 60 and 65 is a value of five. Now, it doesn't matter if you do plus or minus here because that's all going to be taken out of the equation when we go to row two. Uh, so if you do 60 minus 65, it would be a negative five, uh, but we can do absolute value for all of these uh, if you would like, or you can leave the negatives and positives. It really doesn't matter. Uh, the next one, 66 minus the 65, that would be a 1. Same thing for the second one, 66 minus uh, the 65, that would also be a 1. 72 uh, minus the 65, uh, so that would be 7, uh, and so forth and so forth for all 15 measurements. Once you've done the differences between your average okay, and each individual data point, then you can do row 2. Row two is squaring each of these values. So if I have five in the first one, five squared is 25. This is why the negative wouldn't matter. Negative five times negative five is a positive 25. So the negatives would go away anyways. One squared is one, one squared is one, seven squared is 49, you get the idea, and so forth and so forth. So you would do all of these based off of the numbers that you have in row one. Once you have all of your squared values in row two, you're gonna add up each number and divide by 15 to get the average that's gonna go in row three. So I'm gonna add up 25 plus one 
plus 1, plus 49, plus all my other numbers, divide by 15, and that'll give me the number that goes in row 3. Once I have uh, that number, let's say, for example, uh, it comes out to be something like uh, 36, okay? then what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of that number, and then that'll give us uh, the final answer for the standard deviation. So the square root of 36, I picked a nice number to do the square root of, square root of 36 is 6, and so now I have a plus or minus value that goes with our average. So the average was 65, and my heart rate fluctuates about plus 6 and minus 6 above uh, and below that average. So that is the standard deviation uh, value. We won't be doing the class data, and so we'll go ahead and skip the class data because you only have your individual data at home. Uh, and then you'll move on to the review questions. So make sure that you answer all of your review questions for the laboratory. Uh, there's also uh, a section on physiological measurements. This is where you can review the metric system. Uh, so all kinds of metric system uh, conversions to do. Some review of chemistry. How do you get the molecular weight of molecules? Uh, how do you calculate percent solutions? Uh, how do you calculate concentration of solutions? Uh, if you are uh, stuck on any of these problems, this is a great opportunity to use the Cyber Cafe. Uh, so post a question in the Cyber Cafe, see how many of your peers uh, can help you out with this, and uh, periodically I'll jump into the Cyber Cafe uh, and answer questions uh, as well. So that is uh, Laboratory One and homeostasis and learning how to uh, take your pulse rate data. Uh, I hope that helps. Take care.